tonight are joined. We tonight are joined by three of the student directors here, Greg Pearson of Missouri Alpha, Brady Alexander of Florida Alpha, and Nathan Kung of Georgia Alpha. Three very bright minds that are able to really help us give the student perspective of what it's going to look like. Each of them have kind of gone through their own election processes and really are here to share their expertise with you guys. So really picking up where we left off last week, I will go ahead and uh, pass this off to our speaker for tonight as we get into things. A little bit more about Greg Pearson. Greg Pearson is currently at the University of Missouri. Greg is studying business and political science there. He is currently a junior um, and originally from St. Louis. During his time at the University of Missouri, he has interned for Aldi as a district manager and turned and continued his experiences back on campus as an ambassador, focusing on recruiting and really working with the University of Missouri. On top of that, he's worked on a few campaigns in the Congressional 2nd District of Missouri and really finding success in that space as well, including a campaign for his own city council in Columbia, Missouri. With that being said, Greg is going to be the man of the evening. So any questions that you have, feel free to share those as we kind of go along. But if we're not done with Greg, Greg keeps on, uh, keeps on bringing the power with him. Greg also works at the, uh, at the University of Missouri as a senator in the Missouri Student Leaders Association and is currently a coordinator for the Cornell Leadership Program in the School of Business at the University of Missouri. Throughout his time at Missouri SEC, a newly reestablished chapter, he has served as the Vice President of Recruitment and currently serves as the Chapter President. With that being said, I will go ahead and pass the floor off to him as we get kicked off tonight. For any questions that we have, feel free to hold on to those into the chat before we jump off into our breakout sessions for tonight. Same format that we followed uh, last week. But with that being said, Greg, take it away. All right, I appreciate it, Keaton. Hope you guys can hear me okay. We'll go ahead and get started. I want to run through this pretty quickly. Um, let me know if you guys can see that. Hopefully that's, that's showing up now. Um, but I want to get through this pretty quickly so you guys have the opportunity to get some practice in. Um, really what we're, we're going to be focusing on tonight is selling your vision, making yourself the, the candidate that stands out in this election, and bringing home the win. Um, so we'll get it started. Quick outline, we're gonna start by talking about what it looks like to assess the environment, figure out where you are in the race and who's around you. Then we're gonna talk about articulating your platform, making yourself stand out, be the one that people wanna vote for. And then we'll talk about actually going out and winning the votes, what it looks like to leverage the winning coalition and end up on top on election day. Before going into breakout rooms, which like I said, will really just focus on practice um, with myself, Nathan and Brady. So appreciate you guys being with us tonight. A couple big outcomes that we want to see. We want you guys to understand your position relative to other candidates. We want, to, want you to know where you are in the race today um, and what that's going to mean in terms of getting to the top by election day. Next, know your key differentiators, the things that set you apart from the other candidates. Be able to employ those strategies for actually winning support, figure out what, it, what it's going to take to win, and then engage others in the vision for the chapter because at the end of the day, Winning the election is not really the thing that matters here. It's what, what matters is being able to find success in your time on the executive board. Um, so that's what we're going we're gonna to focus on. A couple notes on, on why we're doing this, what, what's important. Um, most races are not going to be won and lost on election day. If you can nail your election day speech, if you can really make yourself look good on election day, and that's what Brady's going to be talking about next week, you're going to be in great shape. It's really going to help put you over the top. But it's, it's not gonna be the entire campaign. So there's a lot that needs to be done between now and the actual day of the election. Next, you need your brothers to be excited about having you on the executive board. You need them bought into your vision. You need them to be committed to helping you be successful. Um, without that, your, your plans, your, your vision isn't gonna be executed. Next, everyone deserves to have a voice in this process, even if they're not the ones running. Everybody deserves a little bit of face time with you, understanding what it is that you're bringing to the table and why you want them to vote for you. Um, so we're gonna give you some strategies to go out and actually do that. Like I, like, like I think is really important to think about in all of these, this applies to uncontested races as well. Um, these things are, are true. That race obviously isn't gonna be won on election day. It's, it's won when you put, put in your application, but you still need people bought into the vision that you're bringing. You can't, can't just be in a spot where you get elected by default because nobody runs against you and nobody wants to help you. Um, and everybody still deserves to be involved in, in your campaign and involved in your platform, even if you don't have an opposition. So just keep that in mind. So let's start by assessing the environment. First, you need to ask yourself a couple questions about the historical context of this particular position. Who's held it in the past? What's been done well? And what needs to be improved? 
these are the things that are going to help you understand why am I coming into this position and, and what is it about this that, that needs to be overhauled, needs to stay the same? What do people like about this role? Um, what, what do people like about the people that have held this role? What are people looking for in the next candidate? Um, next, you need to understand, going back to what Nathan was talking about last week, what direction is the chapter moving? Is the executive board going to experience a big overhaul or is it going to be a lot of people running, running again in the same positions? Is it going to be the same kind of thing? Has there been a big shift in the chapter in terms of what is important? Is the, is the chapter now starting to prioritize something that really wasn't relevant a few years ago? Um, and then ultimately, what are those big goals, the, the big, hairy, audacious goals that your chapter is chasing? For us, we want to go out and get our first buck cup. Um, for others, it, it could look very, very differently. But the, what's important is understanding what are we chasing? What, what do we want to accomplish? And being able to articulate that, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then, of course, you need to know the competition. Who's running? Is it somebody that's the incumbent in the election? Is it somebody entirely new? Are they someone really new to the chapter? Is it someone that's been around a long time? Um, why are they running? What is important to them? What does their platform look like? Um, what, what seems to have motivated them to do this? Are, are they similar reasons to you, or is it something completely different? And then who do they have behind them? You need to know what kind of support you're getting yourself into. You don't want to end up in a position um, where you have a tough time drawing support because the competition has, has already made strides. Um, but you also need to understand who's still on the table. Who can I go out and get to support me? Who do they maybe not, not have on their side yet? Um, these are important things to ask. So I would recommend going back through this presentation when we send it back out afterwards and spending some time with each of those questions. Most of them are, are just a bullet point or two. Knowing your answers to each of these is going to make it really effective um, in terms of when you try, try to go out and leverage that a little bit. Um, so let's talk about the platform. We, we talked all about the platform last week with Nathan, building a platform, getting yourself in a, a pretty stable position. We'll go back to this golden circle, which hopefully you guys are somewhat familiar with, but it starts with why. Um, what is your why for running? What has motivated you to get involved in this capacity? You need to be able to articulate, why am I doing this? Um, next, you need to know what sets you apart. What piece of your process is different than everybody else's? What about what outcomes are you looking for that are different than the other people in this race? Um, and ultimately, why should others support you? The reason is because your product is going to be better for them than anybody else. So when you get to that point of asking, why should others support me? You need to understand why you're motivated, what your process is going to look like and why that, that process is different. And then what the product is that you're offering people that they should get behind. Um, at the end of the day, you need to know the answer to this question. How will your time on the executive board improve the chapter experience for the average brother? The average brother is not the ones running for executive board offices. They're not the ones that are committing 20 hours a week to SIG Um, They're the ones that show up because they see the value in the experience. They want to be around the guys. Um, they're getting something out of this. How is their experience going to be improved? If you can articulate that you are the one that can improve their experience the most, that's probably what they're going to be voting on. That, that's what's most important to them. So let's talk about tying yourself to the vision for the chapter. We talked about those VHAGs that your chapter is chasing right now that, that you guys are going after. Um, where do you fit in, in that picture? Why, why are you the guy that can help your chapter get there? Um, maybe it's because of the experiences you've had in the past. Maybe it's because you're just really passionate about a certain part of chapter operations that's critical to getting to that point. Um, maybe it's something you bring from another organization that you've learned that you want to come in and help contribute to CS. Um, what are you going to do to advance the mission? What are the things that really define your priorities? How do you align with the priorities of the chapter? Maybe the most important piece of all of this is how can you get other people involved? What, what, else, what role do you have for them in your time on, on the executive board? Do you see people having a lot of opportunities to join your committee? Do you see people that are, that are really going to need to step up um, and engage in a certain part of your platform? What does that look like? Who else can, can you draw into this and not just say, hey, you should vote for me, but hey, you, you need to be a part of this. I think you'd have a huge role to play in my success. I want you to be on board for that. Um, that that's the kind of thing that's going to get people motivated to not only vote for you, but be vocal about it. They're going to say, I, I'm voting for him because I like this piece to, that he's doing. I'm voting for him because I think he'll get a lot of people involved. Um, and the last thing is, what are the big goals of the chapter 
should be chasing but aren't. Maybe the chapter's too focused on the Buck Cup. Maybe maybe they're too focused on getting more members in the chapter and it's it's causing a decline in the in the balance man program or something like that. What are the things that you realize need to be being done better that that currently aren't? And, and what are the things that you can bring to the table and say this is this is what's most important to me? And I think this should be important to you guys too and maybe shift their perspective a little bit. So being able to answer those questions are going to help you align yourself with the direction of the chapter and persuade people that the direction you want the chapter to move is the right direction for it to be moving. All right, we'll get into the nitty gritty a little bit here and then I'll wrap up. We're, we're really not gonna take too much time for this, but leveraging the winning coalition. Um, so what is the winning coalition? This is a little bit of the political science major in me coming out right now, but it's a political science term that, that really is just defined as the people whose support will ensure victory. If you have these people voting for you, they will, they, you, you'll win, you're guaranteed the, the win. In a democracy like our SIGEP chapters operate, technically the winning coalition is 50% of the chapter plus one vote. You need 50% you need of the chapter plus one in order to win. Um, but I think in reality, these elections come down to a smaller group of people being the ones you really need on your side. Um, so what you need to know is, is who do you need in order to win this election? It's probably not you need 28 people to be 100% for my chapter. We, we would need 28 people to be 100% committed, like this is my guy. You probably need about 10 that are able to say, I, I'm behind him because I agree with his vision. And those people will influence a lot of the others in the chapter. So what's this look like? You need to know the different cliques. You need to know the different groups. Um, you need to determine the leaders of each group. And then you need to not waste your time talking to the people you know are not going to be on your side or see the chapter completely differently. It's not a waste of time to spend some time working with them on what, what areas your vision might overlap. But if you know you're not going to get their vote, it's probably not worth you, you trying to get it, um, if you can use that time in a better way. So let's talk about the pillars and corners. It's, it's something that Nathan touched on last week. What are the different corners of the chapter and who's holding the chapter up? Um, for, for Nathan, he talked about there's the athletes, there's the skaters, there's the people that are, you know, gung-ho SIGF all the time. Um, your chapter probably has some different groups. They may be divided by class. They could be divided by um, major, things like that. Understand where the different groups are, who, who's voting in the same kind of pool, who's talking to each other about elections, um, and then determine who their leaders are. Who are the ones that are energizing those groups to go out and, and actually achieve some kind of goal to pursue some sort of objective? Who are the ones that are going to be able to persuade the others in that group to win your votes? Um, so it could be a, a former executive board member. It could be somebody who's held the position in the past. Um, it could just be somebody who, who just everybody seems to gravitate, gravitate to and, and has a lot of influence. Um, at the end of the day, the concept of motivating the middle becomes really important here. Uh, you don't want to spend too much time working on the people that are just not engaged in the chapter that you know are not going to really care too much about elections. You do want to encourage the people in the middle, the people that are, are going to be engaged in elections, but probably you know, don't really know which way they're leaning, aren't going to be talking about it too much, don't spend too much time influencing others. Uh, you want them to know about you, um, but you don't need to spend as much time winning their votes. But the people at the top you need to have on your side, the, the people that are really going to dig into uh, what is your platform, are going to ask you questions about it, are going to make sure that you're the man for the job, that are not going to want to see their hard work go to waste. Um, those are the people you need to need to have on your side. So break the chapter up into some groups and, and start to identify, you know, who can who can help me here. Um, and then, you know, you're ready to go. You can launch your campaign a little bit. You want to tighten up that winning coalition. You need to know who are the people that really support me. I 100% have always had my back, my closest friends, the people who I can influence. Make sure they're on your side. Talk to the outgoing candidate. It, it could be you're running for re-election, but, but maybe it's not. Um, and in that case, if you can get that person on your side, that's going to be a big boost, unless the chapter doesn't like that person. Maybe that's why you're running. Um, but somebody in this position that people respect that have a lot of influence in this particular area of operation. Um, you also want to talk to some of those experienced leaders, the people that are older than you, the people that have been around longer, um, the ones that are, that are really have, have invested a lot into SIGEP and want to see it succeed. Uh, and then those leaders of the certain circles, the, the different groups in the chapter. Um, 
see if you can tighten up your winning coalition to be a smaller number. And if you can really get those, those people on your side, you'll know you'll pull enough support on election day to win. Next, it, it's about making the approach to those individuals. Those guys are usually worthy of one-on-one -on -one attention. They don't want you giving the same pitch to the, that you give to the whole group. They're not just going to want to hear your election day speech prepared. They want to know that you understand who they are and that they have that influence that you know they have. Um, and they're going to really want to see that you appeal to them directly. Uh, you need to be able to sell yourself and your vision. But like I said, you need to be able to explain to them why you will improve their experience or advance the goals that they're seeking. Um, and at the end of the day, there is a little quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. Um, what can you provide them? And in turn, what can they provide you? Who can they help motivate? Who can they get behind you? And don't be afraid to make an ask. Say, I, I hope that you'll support me. Will, will you be supporting me? Will you be voting for me on election day? Will you endorse me for this position? Will you nominate me for this position? You got to make an ask in there. You got to seal it. Um, you'll start to see the, a little bit of my recruitment background coming out here because this, these are the same kind of things we talk about. Um, but you need to be able to per personalize that approach to the people that are really going to make up your strongest support. So a couple action items for you guys and, and we'll get you turned out of here. Go ahead and make a list of your major platform positions and the things that set you apart from the other people running in this race um, or just from, from the conventional wisdom of the chapter. What are the things that really make you stand out um, if you're running on a post and things like that? Know how you'll leave the chapter better than you found it. Understand what the chapter experience is going to look like when you're done molding it uh, and, and know why that's going to be better. Know how it's going to be executed uh, and be able to explain that. And then you need that list of people that you have to have on your side. You, you need to know who those people are. So spend some time working on that list. Um, make, make sure you understand this is, these, this is the, the order of people that I want to talk to and go out there and do it. And then go convince your, your guys that you're the man for the job. Go spend some time talking to people. Work in the halls is, is the phrase we used to always use. Go door to door, whatever it looks like. Make sure you, you spend as much time talking to people about why you're the man as possible. Uh, because like I said, the important thing here is not you winning this election. It's you being successful once you've won it. Um, so you need to have people engaged in what you're doing and supportive of, of your mission, of your plan. Um, I think that's all I've got. So really what I'll do right now is open it up to some questions from you guys. Um, but also feel free to ask Nathan Brady uh, and myself some questions in these breakout rooms because the reality is all of us have not only been elected in our own chapters, sometimes more than once. Um, we also, we got elected to the national board and, and we know how to talk to people um, about what sets us apart and what, what makes us unique uh, and why we're the man for the job. Um, and at the end of the day, we, we, can, we can really be leaned on. So, so definitely spend some time um, talking to us. We'll, we'll give you our contact information and feel free to, to come back and ask us more questions in the future. But uh, I think that's all I've got. So Keaton, I don't know if we want to open it up for, for questions now. We just want to go straight into breakouts, whatever that looks like. Absolutely. If anybody at this time has any questions, feel free to share those in the chat or come off of mute and we'll go ahead and answer those questions now. Um, if there are no questions, though, we will hop into the chat rooms. Feel free to continue the discussion in that space as well. Those breakout rooms are going to be randomly assigned, uh, really kind of making sure that things are kind of going smoothly in that space. We did just get a question. It says, I get nervous in crowds. Do you have any tips for my campaign? Greg, yeah, you want to take absolutely. That sure. And, and I think in terms of, you know, overcoming some of those public speaking nerves, that's going to be Brady's jurisdiction next week. But my advice for your campaign is to make it as individual as possible. You, you might be nervous in crowds, but you know how to go out and talk to people. You, you know how to make friends and, and be the kind of guy that, that people want to have around you. Um, Go, go talk to people individually. Spend as much time doing that as you can. And like I said, that's what's probably going to win you this election, not, not your speech on election day. So it, it's really going to be important that you spend some time out there just, just talking to the people who matter um, the most to, to you, um, who you think have the most influence, but also talking to the, the average guy that, that's got to vote just like everybody else. That's, that's the way this is, is structured. So Brady will help you nail it on, on election day. But for now, just talk to the guy.